All right, Brian, this is going to be a super short update. I'm talking 10 minutes tops. We'll see. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Jessica. And I am Brian. And this is... Elsie! Yay! Yay! So yeah, we just wanted to come on here and do a really quick update video. Um, we always say we're going to do quick updates and then it never happens, but this one's really going to be a quick one. So we have a few things. First of all, we want to say a huge thank you to you yes. guys. Everybody who sent kind words about the passing of our dear friend Jennifer and also who donated to the GoFundMe. You guys seriously have no idea how much you have made this time just a little bit less stressful for the whole Gravely family. Mm -hmm. um, just, I was just taken back by the amount of support that came in both through donations and also just your, you know, words and everything like that. Also, I was really, 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 really happy to hear some of you comment and say, hey, this, this video is going to make me go out and get my colonoscopy, get my, you know, test, my mammogram that I'm late for, etc. Like, we cannot preach anymore. <laughs> go get all your tests when you're supposed to push your doctors to give you tests if you feel like something's wrong. All of those things. I'm going to preach that until the day I die. Yep. Um, I will say that I was just happy that... We got to share Jennifer's story to uh, a very large amount of people. Uh, and me and Anthony were talking about it, that it was just so amazing that, you know, somebody's life that has had such a profound impact in their family and in her friends around her and all of that has now had a large impact on a bunch of people around the world. And that's just an amazing thing. Uh, and so I know personally from, from talking with Anthony that he would, if he were here, he would be thanking you all profusely as well. Oh yes. He, he seriously was blown away by what you guys, all the support from you guys. Um, next we wanted to just kind of tell you what we've been up to lately. Yep. Um, what have we been up to? I mean, we did that. Oh yeah. We, so we're in our new, we're in the kitchen. We're facing the other direction. House. We're not time. living in the house yet. It's like a whole hot mess of us. Yes. This house is a hot mess. It yeah. needs like so much renovation, you guys. It's it, but we love it. Every oh, yeah. time we no, walk in this place, it's so like happy. this is our home. It feels so like it just feels right. Um, but yeah, we decided one day to just like you know take off a portion of the wall back there in the kitchen. Just well, we were and trying, you can't see it, but yeah. there's a hidden box back here we too. We were trying to get to the hidden box because we were just like, ah, oh, let's just see. So, there was anyway, nothing in it but garbage. So. Unfortunately, we've been keeping pretty busy, so we haven't had time to like really work on the house a whole lot. We do have like some estimates coming in for like things like new electric and all that, Plumbing. all that stuff. So we're we're rolling on that very slowly. Um, but we're just sort of, it's, yeah, it's a, the whole thing. Yes. Um, we also got really sick. I actually tested positive for influenza A, which was really fun. It was awful. Yeah. Like when I felt sick, I felt worse than some of my like chemo days. And it, mm. it actually, every, it messed her up. It, it's weird because every time I get sick now, I, it brings me back to those feelings that I had when I was going through chemo and all that. And when I was like recovering from surgery and it really does mess with me. It really triggers a lot. Like, I don't know if it's like PTSD. It really just triggers stuff in me. Um, there was one night when my fever was like 103 and we were thinking, we were like this close to going to like an urgent care ER kind of thing. But I like was afraid to go to the ER or anything because I thought that they would tell me that I had cancer, which is like so, which, like that cancer come back, which is so bizarre and like but in that moment the way I was feeling and I've been having like other aches in my body in certain areas that were just like I, it, it, yeah it, it really triggered me um but speaking of which oh one other thing we did though well when you I mean you just talked about you getting sick oh yeah well yeah I mean I got I actually tested positive for influenza That's I true. got way sicker than you but guys. <laughs> Elsie and I both got sick we both got colds yeah and uh and actually we we didn't even really know that Elsie was sick she was having just like a slight runny nose and then yeah. but we took her to get tested for influenza just because we were all around Jessica during that time and uh, and that's when they looked in her little ears and they found out that she had an ear infection in one ear and I about died yeah like, when I, I called him and told him because I went to get her tested um, and I went and got tested because at that point place. we were keeping them separate because he was sick and we thought he might have influenza yeah. A and so we were like 
trying to make sure Elsie didn't get it if because I was like pretty much over it by that point it was a whole lot of mess yes um but I called him and I was like so she has an ear infection and he just like I, I was not expecting that emotional of a reaction from him well, because I grew up getting ear infections constantly my mom said basically about once a month when yeah. I was a child I would get ear infections and uh and it was so bad that eventually they like installed tubes in my ears and and all of that and so it was like I was like I it was just like I understand babies get ear infections and all that kind of stuff I just hope and pray that I didn't pass on whatever weird genetic thing that I have that caused me to get a, a bunch of different ear infections onto her that's all yeah. I'm really hoping for so because trust me I've had every kind of ear infection under the sun and I would not wish that upon anyone yeah they suck but Horribly. again, she never even really noticed. Like no, other than her nose running, like time. she never acted. She never ran a fever. She never acted like she was really in pain. I think we caught it just early enough that then we were able to, you know, get her on the antibiotics and get her like get her sorted out. Yeah. Um. And then you got much. We when you te you did not test positive, yeah. so neither of them tested positive for uh, the flu A. So, um. Luckily, like I was so glad because it just. I was, was really not wanting him to get as sick as I had gotten, and especially not her either. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. But in the last couple of weeks, we also were able to, Brian and I got away for a night. One night. One night. We did an epic night, though. We So one day, we left at like, what, noon? Yeah. We flew to Vegas, which is like a three-hour flight. Flew to Vegas, three and a half hours. Uh, flew to Vegas. And then went to the Sphere to see U2, which is one of my favorite bands. And we had the opportunity to go. Uh, I got actually got tickets through my work. So I was like, I'm not passing up this opportunity to go see. So, First dirt, of all. Dirt cheap flight. Yeah, <laughs> dirt cheap free flight. Free concert at the free Sphere. Concert. I was like, I'm not passing up this opportunity to go see one of my favorite bands and see a super cool new venue. If you guys haven't seen the Sphere or don't know what we're talking it's about. It's insane. Just Google Sphere. And it's like, it's literally a Sphere. It's it's crazy. It's mind boggling. Yeah. It's like the largest IMAX, Omnimax screen you will ever see. Yeah. So we did that and then we literally, our flight left at 3 p.m. the next day and we flew home. We like did not want to be away from Elsie. We were going to bring her originally. Because My parents I, watched her. So. Uh, yeah. I have a friend in Vegas who was going to watch her for us during the show. So we were going to bring her with us. Um, um, but then we decided it was just, since we decided just to go one, for one night, it, we were gone for like less than 36 hours. We decided it wasn't worth like putting Elsie, you know, through all the flight and everything like that, which was good because then the day we came back, we found out she had the ear infection. So like, yeah, anywho, um, but yeah, it was, it was really epic. So we've been just kind of enjoying Elsie, enjoying life. She is like, Seriously, the happiest baby. baby I've ever seen in my life. She, she literally wakes up in the morning and she sings for like 10-15 minutes. And she smile like her smile in the morning. What do you say about it? Oh, I <laughs> one morning she I woke up and I looked at her and she gave me that giant gummy smile and I said I said, Darling, your smile could melt snow on the top of Everest. Yeah, so it's so sweet to see him being a dad too, because he's such a good dad. And then this morning just seeing him like carrying her around and like she's so tall and seeing her like look he's six foot six seeing her like look up at her at him like when it, 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 she looks like all the way up at dada like it just melts my heart um so yeah but then the other thing that's been going on which is you know one of the main points of this video is an update from my, our latest trip up to mayo clinic um so we went like a few days ago we went to, up to rochester uh, we were up there for a couple of nights. I had my regular blood work, CT scan, and meet appointment with oncology. Um, and so that's something that I have been doing every three months uh, since I have been declared like no evidence of disease mm -hmm. in, after my surgery in January of 2023. So for the last year, we've just been doing the every three month checks. Um, so we went up there for that, and do you want to tell them kind of what happened? So, uh, you know, we always get the scans first, and we always get the results first from from those scans before we ever talk to the oncologist, before we ever get, like, explanations from from the doctors. Uh, and she got the, the chest uh, CT scan first. Everything was normal about that one, like nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. Uh, and then we were waiting for the next one to come, and uh, all of a sudden, I see Jessica, and she's like, "Oh, I got, I got the the update," 
uh, from the scans and she starts reading and I'm looking into her eyes and I'm seeing like this emotional change. She goes from like serious and then she's, she starts to like kind of break down just a little bit and she's getting like a little teary eyed and everything. Uh, and it was, uh, it was, so it's, I'll read and I, I, I go, I go, what, I go, what's wrong? And then read, read what their So I'll read you what, what I read. Okay. So impression says interval increase in size of retro peritoneal, peritoneal and left pelvic lymph nodes since CT dated 11, 21, 23. That was my last one. Suspicious for nodal, 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 mm -hmm. nodal, nodal, suspicious for nodal metastases. Mm -hmm. And I see that word metastases. suspicious and metastases and it's like sucked the air out of the room. It's like, okay, wait, that's not what we were looking for. We were yeah. like, the last scans, like, all the last scans. We've had a year of just nothing but of nothing. nothing's changed, nothing's changed, nothing's changed. And yeah. then all of a sudden it's like, oh, something has changed. Yeah. And, and so, they say it's suspicious. And and I've been especially nervous leading up to these scans. Um, and so I was like, just kind of freaking out a little bit. But I was like, you know what? I've been suspicious for a lot of things and it's yeah. turned out to not be the things that they were suspicious that it was. So I was like, let's just not panic. You know, let's, let's just wait to, talk. wait to talk to the doctor the next day. Um, luckily, I think that was what, like, I don't know, five or six o'clock when we got those results. Yeah. And then we were, our meeting was the next day at 1145. Um, and so we, we tried not to freak out, but in my head I was thinking of all the things I'm like, are they going to want to biopsy it? Are they going to want to like, you know, do a, like, are they going to want to start chemo right away? Are they going to want to, you know, like all these things in my yeah. brain, which are, you know, I'm like, okay, but we've been through this enough that we, that I know, like, I'm like, okay, like I kind of know what they're going to, th how they're going to process it and how they're going to think. And it's probably going to be X, Y, Z and like not, you know, panic mode. Um, but they, there's a list of like the increases and a lot of them seemed really small. Like it was like, this was two millimeters and now it's four millimeters or this was three millimeters and now it's four. There was a couple ones that were like, this is seven and now it's, you know, nine or whatever. Um, so I was like, okay, let's try not to panic. But at the same time, it does say the word suspicious and it mentions metastasis. So I'm like, okay, let's just, you know, whatever. So we, we go we, to the doctor. We go to the doctor and she walks in and she's all like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. What's going on? How's life treating you kind of stuff? Yeah, and, like, and like, you know, er everything's like super nice and, and friendly. And we're, you know, telling her about what's been going on and about the house and like all that kind of stuff. And then finally she's like, okay, it's like, so let's, let's talk about the scans and everything. And she's like, she's like, we aren't concerned about this. Yeah. She said she, 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 it wasn't like, we aren't concerned at all. Like, but it was like, this is not a big concern for us. Yeah. She said that like, this is not when, when cancer returns, she's like, this is not a symptom that we typically see like first. Well, that it would and, be in one area. And, and it, would, too, it would just like, be in the one area and, and all of that. She said that she showed the scans to the head of the gynecologic oncology department. Who and actually did who my did surgery. The surgery and all of that and was, was one of our biggest advocates during the tumor boards and stuff. Yeah. And showed it to the other, uh, other oncologists. And they all kind of came to the same conclusion that, you know, Jessica had had this or has this lymphocele that's in still in her body from the surgery. And that as the body is like trying to like close that up and, and process the lymphatic fluid, it can cause like the lymph nodes to swell just a little bit. And she's like, and she's like, and they, they went up just tiny, tiny amounts. Yeah. She's like, you know, you, you have an increase of like a one millimeter. She's like, that's like a pinpoint yeah. in size, you know, yeah. it's like, and so she was, she was very like reassuring and calming and just being like, you know, yes, we aren't, we aren't really concerned about this. This isn't typically what we see with this kind of thing and, and all that. And, uh, and, but the, the only suggestion at that time when she even said like, you know, oh, these, these, uh, lymph nodes are so small that like we couldn't even biopsy them yeah. anyway. Like it'd be hard to get like a solid biopsy. And I, I even said like, I was like, but I swear to God, if you, if you biopsy this thing and you find keratin <laughs> granulomas, it's like, I'm going to lose it. But, yeah. but yeah, so they basically just said, we're just going to monitor this yeah. and we want you to come back 
in like two months as opposed to three months to, to get additional scans. Yeah, so one other part of the report said that there was an interval further decrease in the size of the left pelvic lymphocele, which if you guys remember after my surgery, I had to get like an extra drain put in and that was because of that. They had taken out like 57 of my lymph nodes, so there was just like all this extra, like, yeah, it, it, was, it was a lot. So, <clears throat> so basically, um, as, and that so it is showing that that lymphocele is decreasing and so hopefully that's just you know that we were also thinking that because i had had the flu like yep. that could mess with your lymph nodes too we were originally thinking that um so the bottom line is they're not like super concerned they definitely want to keep a close eye on it i'm very grateful that i have a team that is able to you know and that we are fortunate enough to go to such a great place where they are able to see these just tiny changes and that really gives me hope that like they're gonna see anything that's possibly going on. They yep. said there's no other like activity anywhere else that they're there's seeing. No masses there's no anywhere. masses or anything like that. But just the fact that they're able to see these like one millimeter little changes um, is you know is great. And I'm glad that they want me to come back sooner. But I'm also glad that it's not like a you know let's do this biopsy now. Let's do all this right now. It's just sort of a okay. Let's just wait and see. And somebody, Basically, there were there, their reasoning is that there are other reasons as to why these lymph nodes yeah. could be swollen. Like, so there's no reason to like go into full panic mode yeah. and and just you know start all the stuff over again. Yeah. And somebody asked me, they were like, "Well, so are you going to be able to like shut your brain off?" Oh, it's Tess who asked me that. Tess asked me, she's like, "Okay, well, you're going to be able to shut your like not worry about it for two months." And I'm like, "Actually, yeah. Like, I feel that confident in the team and." What they're telling me, like, I haven't even been worried about it at all since then. Like, after we spoke to the doctor, I was like, I, they got me. They they got it under control. Everything's going to be fine. So, anyway. This girl was trying to shove her hand yes. into her mouth. And... We, uh, we are actually going to be taking a little bit of a break from videos, which I know we've already done for a while. But um, you probably won't see much from us in the next month or so. But uh, we just wanted to pop on and give you that update. And then we are so looking forward to getting back into the kitchen, into this kitchen, yeah. and doing like all that stuff. I know we keep saying it. Trust me, we just have a lot going we're, on in life right now. And, and we're we, planning on coming back in April, like, yeah. in force. Give you want to go to mommy girl. now? You want to go to mommy? Give my sweets up. <gasps> yeah. My sweetie, sweetie. We, we, we really want... To, to get back to making regular content and uh, having fun in the kitchen like yeah. we've always done. We've got a lot of ideas like for videos and stuff that we want to do. Like we were even talking about it yesterday. Like just like I've got a list of things that I totally want to do as far as videos are concerned. But we're way over our time. Yes, because <laughs> this, this was a quick update. <laughs> tried okay she, it's impossible we you tried. just can't do it like tried. you know even else knows up. this. <laughs> either way uh subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you can click the bell that is right next to that button so you get notified whenever we post a new video you can also find us on social media facebook and instagram and if you followed us on instagram you would have seen all the amazing photos there and video and stuff that jessica took when we were at the sphere watching you two and you get to see Cute little, pictures of little baby everyone. updates and stuff like that because yeah. Jessica loves dressing her up as you can see. Uh, but I think that's all I got for this one. That's definitely all I got. And that's definitely all Elsie has. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Okay, bye, -bye.